the main question that we're trying to address here in this particular set of experiments was to see if we could find um, and study more in detail neurons uh, of, from patients that have affective disorders, and in this case, schizophrenia. Um, the problem with this approach, of course, is that it's difficult to measure the function of neurons in living individuals. So most of the work that had been done in the past was on uh, looking at brain tissue after the patients had died, so what we call postmortem tissue. But we want to look at the, the living cells. <clears throat> and uh, one way in which one can uh, do that nowadays is by virtue of a, a new technology that's been developed. Now, we all know about embryonic stem cells. Embryonic stem cells are cells, human cells, that have the, have the capacity to give rise to all cells of the body. And, and we can grow these cells in a dish indefinitely, and under certain circumstances we can grow them into, uh, di di differentiate them into different kinds of, of cells, including in our case into neurons. So that's a good starting point. But there's only a few of these lines around, and in, in order to model uh, any kind of human disease with these cells, one usually puts into these uh, neutral cells some gene that's mutated in the disease. But recently, a scientist named Shinya Yamanaka showed that he could take um, normal somatic cells, like skin cells, grow them in a dish, and by adding four very specific factors into those cells, he could convert a normal skin cell into what's called an induced pluripotent cell or cell that looks very much like an embryonic stem cell and behaves very much like an embryonic stem cell. It's not an embryonic stem cell, but it's the, it's the cell of that patient that gave the biopsy. And these cells that are induced into what we're calling iPS cells, uh, the advantage is that they behave like embryonic stem cells and they can, dif they can also be differentiated into all the cells of the body. So this affords your opportunity of taking uh, skin fibroblast from a, a patient with a disease, reprogramming it into an iPS cell, looks like an ES cell, and then differentiate it into a neuron and begin to look at the neurons of that patient from whom you receive the fibroblast from. And what's really quite remarkable is that they don't just differentiate into neuron, individual neurons, they actually connect with each other and they form circuits and they um, fire what are called action potentials and they make authentic synapses, which are the points between neurons where chemicals are released and communicate with them. <clears throat> so armed with this tool, we decided to see whether or not we could determine whether or not there are any biological processes uh, that, are, that are, have gone wrong in the brains of patients with, with schizophrenia relative to the, the controls. Now we knew already from pathology, that is the brains of patients once they died, that have been looked at in, in pathology, that there were some changes that were picked up in these patients' brains after they died. And these include the neurons were smaller in some cases, and it looked as though the connections between neurons were somehow altered in the schizophrenic brains. In addition, the brain structures were shrunken in, in one area called hippocampus and another area called cortex, where the brains were slightly smaller. So we already had some idea of things that we might want to look at uh, when we were able to differentiate the cells. So we did a pretty thorough examination of this over the last few years, and we found consistently that um, there were, in fact, differences. And let me tell you a little bit about uh, one of the methods that we used to look at how the cells are connected with each other. Um, we took advantage of some uh, a technique that was developed here at the Salk Institute by John Young and Ed Calloway, which allows the use of a virus to measure the connectivity between neurons in a dish. And using this very clever method for measuring connectivity, we revealed that, in fact, the schizophrenics neurons were less well connected with each other than were the controls, very consistently across all the patients, and it looked very much like the same phenotype. We drilled down into this a little bit further and could identify that this was reflected in fewer connection points, we call synapses, between, um, the, between the neurons. And in addition, 
we identified specific proteins involved in this connectivity, which were deficient in schizophrenic relative controls. When we looked, however, at the um, functional activity of any one particular neuron, so if you look at any individual neuron at any one time, there weren't really any differences it re between the controls and the schizophrenics. The difference really uh, lies in the ways in which the cells are connecting with each other, which I think is a, was an was a insight for us, a revelation for us in, on the way we were thinking about it. Um, another uh, part of this was to look to determine whether or not we could see any any gene expression changes, or are there any, any, any activity of the, of the genes, the making of proteins, making of RNA that was different between them. Now this work had been done uh, previously using post-mortem or, or pathological tissue um, from autopsy material. <clears throat> and there were some differences that had come up in those studies. Um, but we wanted to now look at living cells, living neurons, and see if there were, there were differences in their activity. There's two parts to it. One is that we did see differences between uh, the expression of certain genes in the controls versus the schizophrenics. And interestingly, several of the genes that were found to be misregulated in the postmortem tissue were also came up in ours analysis. But we also found additional genes identifying new pathways that were um, misregulated in the schizophrenic brains. So armed with this, we wanted to see whether or not any of the drugs that had been previously shown to be uh, therapeutic or helpful in the treatment of schizophrenia would have any impact on these um, changes that we'd found in their connectivity between the cells. So we screened a series of um, known compounds uh, on the cultures, on the tissue culture, at a time where we knew they had these um, deficits. And we treated the cells for three weeks during the latter period of their differentiation. And quite remarkably, uh, we found one of the compounds that could reverse these synaptic deficits to a large extent from the way they were as a schizophrenic to, to normal levels. And when we examined not just the, the uh, connectivity, but also the morphology of the synapses uh, had returned as well as some of the expression of proteins that we had shown were important for the connectivity between the cells. So in this case, um, we not only were able to show that there was a deficit, but we also feel that this model system in general is useful for screening to discover not just how drugs work, but maybe screening other drugs, other novel compounds that might be able to approach this in, in different ways. And if you think about it a little bit further, it may be in the future that we could use these uh, cultures derived from individuals that are living and be able to test in their neurons drugs that were more important or less important. And one might be even able to test for different uh, doses of the drugs to see which may be more toxic or non-toxic. I think finally, um, I just mentioned one of our surprises about all of this is that uh, here you have mental health diseases, which previously we thought of as being, to, to a large extent, environment and socially modified behavioral diseases. But, um, and I'm sure that there really are those aspects of the disease which are related to the environment and family and things of that nature. But what one of the things that our studies reveal is that there are real differences, real biological differences between the brains and the neurons firing in patients with uh, affective disorders like schizophrenia, and that these are real diseases with real underlying biological problems that we need to understand in order to be able to address them.